At my old school, you were judged pretty quickly. You were either the cool guy, the nerd, or the jock. And I really didn't fit into any of those. I was invisible, almost. That kind of didn't really work out for me, because one of the big things I wanted to take part of was being part of student council or a big leadership opportunity. And coming to Salisbury, um, I was handed a blank sheet of paper that I could fill with whatever I really wanted to. I was able to make friends in the first day, in the first hour I got to Salisbury, I had two great friends. They told me to go ahead and do it. And I, I ran for the um, student council and I, I got in. I was elected, my friends elected me. And um, that felt great. I, I almost sat down and cried because I knew that there's people out there that cared. And that was the first time I felt that. And it was just probably the best feeling. And it was the best feeling because I knew I'd have a great four years here. Hi, uh, one of my moments, which was probably my turning point at Salisbury School, happened during my first rowing season. I started as a coxswain instead of oarsman, even though I'm pretty big. Mm. I mean, there's, it's not making sense for me to be a coxswain because I'm shy. Um, I'm not usually the leader of the team, and I'm big, you know. When people look at me, they're saying like, oh, dude, that kid's too big. He's not going to be a coxswain. <laughs> and when I look at other coxswains from other schools, they're so small, tiny, you know, like middle school students for me. I feel bad because, you know, they might have advantage because they're lighter. <laughs> yeah, and I had my first race soon. It was a tough one because I, I had like no experience literally. I tried hard. I even swear at other boats during the race. I, I don't know what to do. But once I get into it, during the middle of the race, I, I could focus more. I couldn't even hear the water pass by. The only thing I saw is my oarsmen was doing a really good job. They tried hard. I tried to do my best to encourage them. Even though I didn't get first place at the end, I feel happy about it because I really enjoyed that race. Uh, I had a good time. And I realized how important for me to support my brothers when they need it. Um, because of my name is Rex, and my passion during that race, my oarsmen, you know, teammates, they started to call me T-Rex. <laughs> I'm really happy that the school gave me just different opportunities than I would at my other school. I play football here at Salisbury School, play right guard and defensive tackle on the football team. And me and a couple of my friends were talking at dinner one night, joking around and whatnot. And my friends KJ and Chua, they asked me, did I want to join the play? And I'm like, no, because that's not really my thing. And I'm not really an actor, not really a public speaker, kind of a shy guy. So I told them I'd do stage crew or something, and just help out. And once I got in there, uh, Mr. Smith handed out everybody a piece of paper and asked what they wanted to do on it. And I wrote down for roles, non-speaking, because I did want to talk. And I wrote down stage crew at the bottom, because I'm, I'm a big guy and I could help out. And I just felt like that'd be a good thing for me to do, just to help out. And as I was leaving, Mr. Smith handed me a, a book. and said, once full of a cuckoo's nest. And I'm like, like, what am I doing with this? And he told me, to try it because I would make a perfect chief. I was like, the chief, like, I really don't want to do this. And then he told me that the chief was like a shy person. 
didn't have too many lines, but he had enough lines for me. And that it would be an uh, important role. And I told him I'll try it. And a couple of weeks went by and I got a little frustrated with school, academics, um, football, because everything was just clustered up. And Mr. Smith talked to me. He really kept me, kept me going. And once the day of the play came, I was, I was really pumped up actually and excited to do it. And I see my mom, and I knew she was coming, but it was just nice to see her in the crowd. And with all my friends and my teachers and everybody was kind of surprised that I was doing something that they really wouldn't, wouldn't expect me to do. And it was just a great, great opportunity to have. And I'm just really proud of myself for doing something really just different from just being on the football field. I'm just happy that I've done it. I'd like to tell you the story of a man who inspires me and who I admire immensely. His name is Carl Williams, and he's been the ski coach here at Salisbury since 1963. And what inspires me about him is that even at 90 years old, he was on the slopes with us every day, training and coaching and pursuing what he loves. Unfortunately, this January he passed away. And it's appropriate that I'm speaking about this now because this morning was his memorial service and as captain of the ski team, I had the honor of speaking on their behalf. I'm grateful for a lot of things here at Salisbury, but none more than having had Carl as a coach, a friend, and a mentor during my four years on the ski team. I learned a lot of things from Carl, but the most important one by far was kind of embodied by his go-to coaching catchphrase, which was, ski fast, have fun, and don't fall down. In life, you can't always ski fast. And the truth of the matter is, you're going to fall down. But you can always have fun. And that was Carl's gift to me as well as Carl's gift to the thousands of boys that he inspired during his remarkable 49 year stay at Salisbury School. I think the most defining moment at Salisbury was sophomore year. I think uh, that whole year in itself was just a great experience. We had four guys in a room in a quad. I mean, usually kids have one roommate. We had three, so it's anything but ordinary. Yeah, it's definitely something that not only a Salisbury kid doesn't get to experience a lot, being in a, in a room with four kids, but if you look at the public school kids that don't get to experience this, it's, it's really special because yeah. we're, we're a limited group For sure. who, who mean, have done this. You really become brothers in that room. I yeah. mean, you, you eat, sleep, and do everything with those guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bond that you don't get anywhere else. Uh, I think that, that year was special because we were young, weren't worrying about college yet. Yeah, seriously, you no know, worries in the world. Worry-free and we're just living the dream. Yeah, I mean, we're all, always had something to do, always planning something with each other, always having fun, enjoying it, especially on Saturday nights. Yeah, I think I mean, that's, the most, that's the most fun way, the way we spend our time. Yeah, I mean, watching movies, Saturday night movie night was, was how we got by on Saturdays, and it was definitely funny. I mean, I know we're probably both thinking the same story yeah, here. We're thinking sure. about one night we're looking through AJ's computer, we're looking for a comedy, and uh, we see this movie, and AJ's telling us Owen Wilson's in it, and we're thinking, oh, he's a, he's a funny guy. Why not throw it on? And see him and his dog, it's called, maybe you've heard of it, Marley and Me. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're thinking, we're opening scene, we start laughing a little bit, think it's going to be a good, funny movie. and Started off laughing, ended up crying. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely was the twist ending there. I mean, we none of us expected it to end the way it did. And Absolutely. We were all sitting around the computer. I remember it was a small little computer screen, four big guys huddled around, and... Next thing we know, the movie ends, and we shut the computer, hit the lights, and we're all in bed in probably 10 seconds. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, a couple of us were crying, but a couple of us were crying a little more 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're probably talking about yourself there. Yeah. Thing. I mean, you're sitting right above me. I'm pretty sure yeah. I went to bed to you crying. All right. Yeah, you got me there. I'll never forget. That was definitely the last, the first and last time I've cried to a movie. I'll be yeah. honest with you. And yeah. I, I don't like telling a lot of people that because we're supposed to be macho, macho athletes. But, you know. Yeah, well, I guess this video is going to change that. <laughs> yeah, you're right.